so just we do, we only have 20 minutes, and uh, I they keep warning me, don't take questions because 20 minutes is short. I, just ask questions if you have questions. We'll be if we run out of time, we we'll run out of time. That's how that works. Um, I'm getting Wi-Fi of my phone, <laughs> um, so let's hope that works. I uh, I have a. Um, a 96 core Databricks cluster running to generate some uh, some test data. Um, I have a short demo, but it might break because my Wi-Fi might be dead or something. Uh, also, I have um, MVP credits from Microsoft. They give you an account with a bunch of uh, uh, credits for um, Azure. I ran out on Friday, uh, and then it switches to pay as you go, uh, which is fine. But pay-as-you-go has other limits, so suddenly half of my demos broke because I was not allowed to make a 96-core machine anymore. I had to put in all kinds of requests to Microsoft to make that work. And when I booted up the machine just now before everybody walked in, it said, nope. Uh, I tried it again, it went, okay. So I, I kept it running. I'm going to shut it down as soon as the 20 minutes are over because my credit, my poor credit card, right? <laughs> All right, um, quickly about me. This is me. Um, I'm a Dutchie, um, hence the weird accent. Um, I started in IT in 1989, hence the gray hair. Uh, I started when I was very young. I'll be 52 this year, so um, old school, Commodore 64 guy. I, so who else Commodore 64 here in the room? I keep forgetting we're in the UK. You probably all had Sinclairs, right? ZX Spectrum? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, right. <laughs> so that's me. Um, also, why am I here talking about how to generate a lot of data? Is that something I like to do in my spare time? Uh, no, I actually uh, need it for work. Uh, and don't worry, this is my last slide. Um, I have, a, I have a, um, a Synapse compute pool, and it's half a petabyte. And I have tables that are 60 terabytes in size. And we have to build a test system and a dev machine. And new rules, um, well, the rules were always there, but they're being enforced 100% now. No more dev data, uh, no more production data in test or dev or anywhere except for the production machine. Uh, I cannot anonymize anything. It's just, no, just not happening. It has to be completely synthetic. So I have to generate 60 terabytes of data every now and then. And there's a bunch of test generators out there that will do this for you if you have enough patience. Because they're single-threaded thingies that uh, will generate a bunch of test data for you. And you can tinker with uh, command line options and start a whole bunch of them on multiple machines or something. But um, I think I found a better way. Uh, so the, that's the only thing I wanted to do for you today in 20 minutes, show you that a thing like that exists and it's really easy to operate. Um, by the way, if you're ever starting a compute pool and you put data in, a, in, a, in a Synapse, 60 terabyte is the absolute maximum if you don't use column store, if you just have non-clustered and clustered indexes. And I'm, I'm hitting it. I'm at 61 terabyte and a little bit. I asked Microsoft what is going to happen if, uh, because I can see the uh, reserved space is 65 terabytes. Is it just going to grow and is this going to work? And the answer was, no idea. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons also why I need this data. I want to see what happens. Do we need to split up this table? Because then be our queries become more complicated, etc. cetera. Um, let's just look into it. So what I have, quickly put on the, this thing here so I can see. Uh, what I have, there is something called Databricks Labs. And they have libraries. And they're not really supported, but they're, uh, they're open, they're available, you can use them, uh, but at your own risk, right? And one of the things that I, one of the thing that I'm gonna show you now here is the data generator. And it's basically a command line, a, com a, a, a tool that allows you to generate test data, but it uses the Spark cluster. So the more compute power you throw at it, the more test data it can generate and the faster it can do that. Um, and I'm just going to show you, it's a bit rough around the edges. I've had to uncomment a few things in the code just because it doesn't work. I get error messages. Um, 
I have one uh, example at the end, if I have time for it, that just doesn't work at all, but that shows that they're trying to build that in. We'll, we'll see. Um, so what I have is a, whoop, what did I do? I, here we go. Ah, okay. Maybe my laptop rebooted and I don't have Zoom it running anymore. That's why it did that. Sorry. Start that quickly. Run. There we go. This should zoom in instead of close the tab. <laughs> um, so I have a, a data cluster running uh, with uh, 364 gigs, 104 cores. This is a 12 machine uh, cluster. Uh, Databricks is really easy uh, to, to spend all your money. Just there's a, there's a, you just go new, 12, go. And if you, that's it. Your credit card starts smoking. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> um, Let's start with a simp with a, um, I have a, a notebook here with a bunch of demos, with a bunch of code that will, I, I'll show you a bit. But first, let's just, just in case we run out of time too quick, I'll just show you first what it does. I have a small demo. Um, what I'm doing, is this big enough? Let me make that a bit bigger, instead of zooming in all the time. So in a notebook, I'm installing this library with, like you do in Python, you just do pip install. That's the Python installer. You can do that in a notebook as well. So I install an external library. So I'm doing pip install Databricks Labs data generator, DBL data gen. And then I'm running this code here. Let's see if that fits on this. Let's do up to here. So I'm importing some, um, importing the library, and then here is a configuration setting, and this is the actual the test data spec that you see, is the uh, data generator code that I'm doing. Uh, you can just point it at a table and go. Ah, I don't want to specify anything. Here's a table. Go generate. You can do that. I, I have sample code for that later, and it's also well documented. But this thing uh, shows you. Uh, it makes a. Uh, data generator spec, and then you tell it to build that spec, and then you end up with a data frame. And then you, you can just save it to Parquet, CSV, whatever you like. And it does uh, funny things, like uh, things that you would expect, generate me a number between this and that, completely random, go. But also the one that you see there with column R, the float type, um, it has a column count, and the column count is 10 in that variable up there. And what it will just do is generate r underscore 1, r underscore 2. So you get 10 columns with generated data. So it, it has some funky uh, generation uh, things. And what I'm doing at the end is just save it to um, a, a delta table in my case. And this will generate 100 million rows. So let's just start that thing. So we can see it running. So first the pip install will start running. Here we go. Then it will just do this part here where in a, I have it on verbose, so it outputs a lot of stuff. And then it will start saving. Uh, the way Databricks works, Databricks doesn't actually do anything until it has to. So the, the thing before with the spec, it just said, yeah, okay, this is just a specification, but I'm not generating any data yet because you didn't do a display or a show or a save. Um, it, it, it just kept collecting what I wanted to do until you say save or display or do something with it. And it, then it started running. So that's why the bottom one actually took the most time. Uh, the spec itself, 1.67 seconds and saving the 100 million rows. And generate, so basically the bottom part did the generating and the saving. And the 100 million rows that uh, we wanted to generate took 11 seconds. How cool is that? Right? <laughs> We're done. <laughs> That's it. No. <laughs> Time. <laughs> How are we doing? Oh, you're okay. So I've, I've tried this with a billion rows and 10 billion rows, and it actually scales really nicely. This thing with a billion rows took almost three minutes, with 10 billion rows, 18 minutes. So not 30 minutes, but 18. So it, it scales really well. You have to, if you play with this and you, you just copy this code and you go, okay, run this on a big cluster and it's still slow, keep in mind, that's the thing I fell for, uh, the one tip, 
you have to do this trick with this shuffle partitions that you want to, by the size of your cluster. And inside your spec, you have to set, where is it, um, the partitions requested. And, oh yeah, the partitions requested and the shuffle partitions. So, uh, Databricks cores can work completely independently. So I have 96 of them, and I just said, I want 96 partitions. And I created a delta file, and I, if you look at the file itself, it's not one file, it's 96 files. So that all of them just started generating data independently. The demo code that they have online all, all have four hard-coded in there, so if you keep running that on a super big cluster, most of your cluster is not going to do anything. It'll just use the four. So be, be aware that you need to change that. Now, I have some examples here. You saw this one just now, and I'm going to go... 40, 50, okay. I'm going to go a little bit further down. Here's that, here's that result here. You see these uh, columns that it generated, so it's really easy to generate a whole bunch of columns. If you want to do a test with a whole wide table, you don't have to specify, a, I want a wide, wide, column, wide table to see what, how that works. You just go, I want 50 columns, and it will just make them for you and number them. Super simple. And the cool part, um, so I'm using, let's see. Here you can see that I have a bunch of country codes. So this is, I want, I want a column with country codes in them. These, this is the list that you can choose for, from. Also, there is a weights. So the, uh, for instance, CN, was that China? Um, it's 10 times the uh, uh, amount of times that I want you to use it than the US, for instance. So you can put weights in there. Makes it a bit simpler. Also, if you want to generate columns that are um, different, different parts and generate it a different way, maybe take a piece of text and then attach a generated number, you can generate columns. You can have a text column that has a piece of text generated and a number column that has a number generated, then make a third column that's based on the other two. And you can say, these two that, I've, that I'm building here, uh, I don't want them in the end result. They're just here for during the generating. So that you will see, let's see. Oh yeah, here. Um, where it does omit is true. That just means I want you to I want to generate this column because I need it for another column because I'm going to attach some things together. But this thing is just as a helper column for that. And the end result shouldn't have this. Also, it generates an ID, a number for every row that you create. And if you want that number, the row number, you just say with ID output. If you don't do that, it's just going to leave it out. Like that kind of things you can do with it. Um, let's do... A little bit further. Let's see. Oh yeah, the expressions are cool. Uh, you're gonna run into some errors if you run this um, this sample. Let's see where is it. Oh yeah, on the top uh, there's a template, and you can just put uh, regex in there, and it's going to generate uh, your test data based on the regex that you put in there. The Test code that you see on the website, if you go to the, the because this DBL data gen has all these sample code, uses the one that I quoted out, where it does I want two words or one word with a, with an initial in the middle, and that breaks it. It just crashes. So the um, regex works, but you have to tinker with it a bit. Um, and what you can also do, really cool, uh, there's an uh, twenty one. Okay. I keep looking at the time. <laughs> Sorry. The uh, oh yeah, this is one where you do the existing table, and you don't have to spec uh, the table. So you could just say, "I have a table. Go generate data." And if you want to, you can add some spec to it. You can uh, give it a table with a whole bunch of columns. And if you're happy with the normal generating that it does without specifying anything, good. Uh, but you can also add some spec to it. For these columns, I want you to do something special. So you can, um, if you're happy with uh, without specifying it and it just generates good test data, just leave it alone. You don't have to type anything out. And the ah. 
Perfect question, thank you. Uh, uh, so I, uh, the question is, am I able to relate to other columns? Um, and I bet the next question is, can you do referential integrity to another table or something? But we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> am I able to, re I'll, I'll, I'll go th straight to that demo that does that. Hold on a second. Um, it is, it is, of course, is the last one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it is the last one. Yeah. So here's the res I'll go to the result first. So I've generated a bunch. This is IoT data for uh, phone mess for messaging from a from a, a telecom provider, and you can see the event type. There's a local call or a text message or the use of the internet, and the other column that has the minutes or the bytes transferred, they are related to that other column because you cannot have bytes transferred if you don't use the internet and the number of minutes for an SMS doesn't make sense. So these things are connected to each other. And you do that by specifying SQL. Here it is. You can just say, I have a column. For instance, the bytes transferred is based on the base column's event type and the base bytes transferred because you generate random bytes for all the columns. And then you, specif you specify an expression. You can do when the event type is internet, then take the base bytes that I generated and or else nothing, right? So you can just stick a bit of SQL in there. Uh, you can use any Spark SQL that is available. So if you want to do an MD5 hash on a certain column or something, to hash if you have a data warehouse that if you're using data vault. Uh, anyway. <laughs> It's a good thing I only have 20 minutes. I almost started an hour rent on data fault. Um, you can, just so you can reference other columns with uh, expressions, uh, with, um, with these regex thingies, but also with SQL. You can just put a piece of SQL in there that knows about the columns if you told, that, told the system that you wanted to use it. Does that answer your question? Perfect, perfect. Uh, am I on time? One minute? <laughs> good, good. One minute. So there's a few things that you can do. There's an um, explain plan that you can build uh, so you can see what it's trying to do if you maybe got it wrong. And this is one that doesn't work well yet, but it ha the data generating is a bit limited and there are libraries out there like Faker, that's a Python library and also a C Sharp library, I think, that has like um, email addresses and uh, web addresses and cars and whatnot. They has, have whole libraries of things that you can generate. Um, DBL Data Gen doesn't have that, but you can attach it to Faker. You can use Faker inside DBL Data Gen and say, I want to generate this column with the Faker library and I want car uh, brands or something. The only disadvantage is it doesn't work. <laughs> I getting, I'm getting a big fat error message, so I have to tinker with it. The, at least the example doesn't work. Um, so on the one hand, I'm super happy with this because it generates a lot of data and really fast, and you have to tinker with it a bit to get the synthetic data is never as good as your production data, right? But you seem to have enough tools to make that work. The trick I've seen to generate data with referential integrity, it doesn't do that. You just uh, make sure that the stuff you generate is the same generate command as the uh, command for the uh, referential integrity. And there is a way to specify a seed. So it, specify, it generates the same data every time. So you can re make repeatable data sets. That m uh, makes it uh, uh, really well as well. Um, 20 minutes already done. Wow, that went fast, right? Uh, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Oh, no problem at all. Will I share the code? Yeah, sure. Um, these are just two notebooks and I can put them somewhere. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? I have a GitHub. Uh, my, uh, GitHub, Andre Kaman. Uh, I'll uh, make a public uh, GitHub with the code in there. Sound good? All right. Excellent. Already 20 minutes. Thank you.